We, product people, are a German-based consultancy and we help companies efficiently develop great products. Like in all our meetings, today we have a guest who will talk to us about exciting topics from the product management world. And this talk will be then followed by a Q&A &A session and a friendly networking event on Zoom, to which everyone is uh, dearly invited. So today we have the pleasure of learning more about engineering and product management from our guest, Mariano Fernandez Cosirio, product manager at Medbell. Mariano, thank you so much for joining us today. We are very excited to learn about your experience of transitioning from engineering to product management, which is a classical path for uh, a lot of people in our field, a lot of our colleagues and friends, and it's a topic of great interest to us. To us. So we're very much looking forward to, to your presentation and please, you, you have the stage. Well, thank you, Anna, for introducing me. Um, I'm going to start sharing. Give me a second. There we are. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation for giving me the space to talk today. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my own experience and how I transitioned from an engineering role to a product role. Um, the title of my presentation is Switching careers is always hard, but sometimes it's also necessary. I feel it because it's for me something really personal that was necessary to me to keep growing myself to move into this new position, even when it's hard to move from your comfort zone that you are as an engineer usually. First of all, uh, a little bit about myself. Who am I? I'm product manager at Medval, as Anna has said. I have studied systems engineering and I moved to product a year ago. I finished my master in systems engineering in 2018 uh, in February and I started working as an engineer, mainly as front end developer. After working as front end developer for three years and moving into Germany, I found myself in a way of okay, I want to make a transition into product after getting to know what product was after talking with some product managers and actually attending to a lot of these product people meetups at the beginning. When did it all start? It all started during college. I was like really interested on my courses on software lifecycle and software development methodologies. I was also always really interested on UX. And I think that my first kind of projects were UX related, even when they were not like typical UX. During college, I used to develop a lot of development tools for other developers and always aiming to help into making developing way easier for them. Like I always wanted to give developers uh, most, um, a better experience while developing. After I finished college, I got, as I said, my first jobs as an engineer, and I start having this curiosity about why we were building something, and it was way bigger than the how we were going to build it. It was something that I start like getting this of when a ticket was arriving to me, I was mostly interested on, okay, why do we want to add this button here? Why do we need this transition here? What's the reason of this page to even exist of this screen? What's the problem that we are trying to solve here? And from there, what I started doing was taking ownerships from small projects and not taking just care of the execution, but also being interested in the um, refining the problem space. I started working mainly with an app that had a lot of internal usage when I moved into my new company at this Medwell. So I had the possibility of when a ticket was coming to me, like, okay, we need to add this new screen for our internal stakeholders. Like, okay, can I go and just talk to them about what are their problems? What do they want to solve? How 
we, we need to solve it. So start getting like this uh, product feeling and this kind of product responsibility without being in a product management uh, role, still being an engineer and still being the one responsible for the execution of the ticket itself. Then I also start reading while doing this. And I want to make a lot of emphasis on when you are looking for this transition, you need to read, you need to really get into what will your responsibilities be? What will you be doing? Why are you doing this? I'm going to just um, showcase these four books that in my path were like really important to me. They gave me like a lot of insights and they really gave me that last push of, hey, I actually want to do it, at least from the theoretical part while I was reading it, product at the scale sounds good. Everything seems to be aligned to what I was. And I was kind of an engineer who was a generalist who wanted to solve a little bit more than just execution. These books are, I know, pretty well known by most of you, but I just think that I need to showcase them because they played a really important role during my transition from engineering to product. Now, my transition was a transition within the company I was already working. So I had the same company, the same product, but I was now uh, facing a new role and new challenges. One of the first big challenges that I found myself out was that now I was required to understand the healthcare industry and the users that will be implied at a larger scale. I was not just into, okay, uh, I need to execute this ticket and understand my product and by knowing my product, being able to make decisions. Now I really need to understand what's the role that our product takes in the healthcare industry in the UK for the surgeons, for the hospital, for each stakeholder where in their life our product is. Also, that now I need to be able to deliver value while still keeping myself aligned with the business goals. This is something that I was to refer on my first time really not um, really conscious about. It's about the importance of not getting lost, don't, don't get uh, don't lost the um, business goals, that you always need to keep working in to align yourself with your company. It's not just because there is a big problem that needs to be solved by you or by your product. It also needs to be aligned what, with your vision, with your vision as a company, with your vision as product team and all that stuff. Another thing that was also challenging was that as an engineer, I was always working on tech, tech product, producing software. Software as a service was something like really understandable for me. But now I was moving into a new field where the product is not software as a service. The product is a surgery. Medwell is a digital hospital that offers a specialized surgery across the UK. So what our users want, our, what our patient want is a surgery. Tech is there just to support this main product. That was like a change that was really uh, challenging to do to me, to set my mind on, okay, this is where my product is. My product is not the app I've been developing the last two and a half years. My product is a surgery that this patient is getting this day and the whole journey across that surgery, of course. Also, there was like a definition of ownership within the product team. We are two product managers at Medwell, and I'm in charge of B2B and internal processes. We call this care process. It's basically, I take care of B2B with surgeons and hospitals and internal processes with uh, patient care advisors and operational teams that um, they basically operate on all the um, setting up surgeries, talking with the patients, making the attention, the full-time attention, customer attention. And I think that one of the most 
difficult changes uh, was that code is not my deliverable anymore. I start, I used to have this tendency of, okay, as an engineer, the week was ending. I was like, okay, it's Friday. I have delivered uh, these three features. This is what I did on the week, these many lines of code, and that was my deliverable. Now, I was uh, facing weeks that my deliverable, I was not really able to say, okay, what was exactly what I did at the beginning. Then I started learning that sometimes during a week, what I did was to refuse an hypothesis and my deliverable was there. It was not something maybe tangible, but it was there. The product itself, as I already said, is the um, surgery, but we also have some uh, applications. What we, what I'm taking care about is the internal app for the operational team, the internal app for the sales team, the practice manager for surgeons so they can manage all the patients and a patient manager for hospitals. Those are basically my four main uh, stakeholders nowadays. Then, I, as I said, I made my transition within the same company. What I would recommend um, to people who is looking for a, a change of role from engineering or from whichever role they are holding right now into product is that you need to create your own vacancy, or at least that was what worked for me. What do I mean by this? You need to be proactive on taking responsibilities over your current ones most of the times. It will overwhelm you at the beginning, maybe, but it's something that I think that works quite well, that is showing yourself interested in the product, interested in the strategy, and getting yourself some extra activities and be proactive on, okay, if there is um, a discussion between UX and product into how to implement something, push for being the engineer in that room and try to understand what's going on and why it's going on. This, I think that is our next point, that is support, always support the product quality. Challenge the why and what in a, in a positive way. What do I mean by this? You need to be always trying to understand why and what are you building? Those are the two main questions that you need to have. And while you are working on the how, always take that on mind and always try to get it from your product managers. I remember sometimes being like really insistent to some of my first product managers like, hey, why are we building this? Why are we requesting this, etc." You can be sometimes annoying. You need to know how to balance that up. And as usual, make your desired career path clear to management. Go sit with your manager and tell them that you really want to make this transition from your role into a product manager management role. So they will be able to support you. They will be able to start giving you probably some tasks or yeah, basically always be transparent on what you want to do. Uh, I think that that's also something that works at every level, transparency, mainly when you have a role as product management that you're going to be in charge of a lot of communication, transparency is always, um, is always good. So coming from engineering, I've separated some perks and some cons on coming to from engineering. I think that the perks are that you really understand the stack of technology that your company is using and its limitations. For example, let's say that you have a product that has video, uh, video calls as one feature, but it's not your core business. You are doing these video calls, you probably know that you're running them through WebRTC because you've been working with that before. So if you have a request, for example, that you need to add um, screen sharing to it, then you have already a formed opinion and educated opinion on the limitations of your tech stack to have a rough idea of 
hey, is it even possible? You should always run stuff through engineering, obviously, but you have this little edge there where you know the limitations of what can you build at the end of the day. You also have fluent talk with the engineering team. That's really a perk. It's not like super important, but sometimes it makes uh, meetings way faster because you can just sit with your team and you understand what they are talking about. You understand when they start talking about APIs, you can go way deeper without too much time of overhead explaining things. You will also have the con that you sometimes will be lost on other meetings, like more business meetings, but it's a trade-off that you know that you're taking. You also know what you want to see on a ticket. What do I mean by this? You've been an engineer. You have been on that side, right? You have taken tickets and you have seen them and be like, oh, what should I be doing here? So you can set your mind in what you would like to see as an engineer when you want to build something. What you do you appreciate to have there? I think that's nice. It can also take you like shorter discussions about some tickets. And obviously you have a rough idea of how much effort does it take to implement something. This is mainly for bargaining with your engineering team. Sometimes you know that a ticket should be doable in a sprint, should be doable in one week. That will give you like an edge over prio. You should not be using it really a lot because at the end of the day, the ones who decides the engineering effort are the engineers, but you can have a more educated opinion on that side. Of course, you also have a couple of cons. To me, it was really hard to start decoupling myself from solution space. What do I mean by this? As a product manager, you work yourself finding problems, defining problems, and always in the problem space. Sometimes it gets really hard to not move yourself into a solution space. Sometimes you see a problem and you are like, oh yeah, this should be solved like this. This is the how. I can even go and just fix it, just code it, just implement it. But you need to be conscious of what's your role in your team and where you will be providing the most value. I think that that's something really important that you need to get, that this find yourself in a way that you are trying to discover problems, to facilitate to your colleagues and not trying to solve the problems all by yourself. Also not to find all the problems by yourself. I think that most of the good stuff comes from interactions and from the real users. You might be the one, your responsibility is more about asking the right questions than to defining the problems for them or to finding them. That brings us to take a step back and work as a facilitator. I think that is kind of um, in the same line is you now are a facilitator. You should be helping things run smoothly and you should not be like the one making the decisions, like technical decisions saying how to solve something. Now you also need to take in consideration way more business factors and interactions. That was something that to me was like uh, a lot of new stuff to learn. That was, okay, uh, if I if we would need to implement this, we need to take in consideration that the surgeons won't, will do this or won't do that. That's something that you get, that you don't get when you are uh, on engineering. You are used to have quite a more limit scope, or at least it was on the roles that I was uh, playing in the company. End-to-end -end ownership, I know it's something that is really good, but I'm adding it as a con just because it was hard to find myself um, taking the ownership from the problem conception and not just until release, but also until the value has been actually delivered because a problem is not solved until the user is not able to actually perceive the value that you are adding to them. As an engineer, it was really scoped on, okay, a ticket come in, a feature come out, 
if something happens after release, then it will come back as a bug and it will be another ticket that come in and another execution that come out. Now you need to have this whole idea of since the problem conception until the feature release and until the value is delivered in a constant way and the problem is actually solved. And even after the value has been delivered, you need to keep paying attention that it, it keeps um, constant and stable over time. I think that that was also something really hard uh, to get that push for the last uh, 95%, for the last 5%. And that value is not delivered just by adding new features to your product. What do I mean by this? Uh, I was really used that all the solutions were technical solutions. Was All the solutions to me was always coding something, adding something. Now, you need to start thinking that sometimes maybe the solution is not in your product. Maybe the solution is a new operational process. Maybe it's not on your scope. You need to be really conscious of not getting lost of the vision of your product. You need to know, you need to be really conscious and keep yourself building the right product and don't get lost into adding just a lot of features stacking one upon each other. And at the end of the day, getting a kind of Frankenstein all across, well, Frankenstein monster all across your product. I would go with my first insights as a PM. What I got, I've been working as a PM just for a year. So what I got that really caught me was that effective communication is really, really important. I was like, uh, not really conscious of this until I start working as a PM of either that you, when you go into a meeting, you need to really know what you want to get from there. You need to go with a plan and you need to be effective because you'll be in a lot of meetings and you will want to be effective on them and to have, yeah, to have also efficiency for your colleagues. You don't want to have anyone wasting time and you have a lot of meetings. Also, Quick wins. Quick wins are dangerous temptations. What do I mean by quick wins? Those things that you see that are like really small problems with really quick solution and that will immediately deliver just a little bit of value. You can get really lost on those. Just keep solving them. Just keep adding a lot of them. But at the end of the day, you'll never keep like pushing for your real product vision. That's something that I think that might happen when you are starting. I fell into that. I think I spent my first uh, two months releasing quick wins. Also, that the value is only delivered once a user can perceive it. That's what, what I was talking about just a couple of minutes ago. Um, that push for, last, for the last 5%. The value is not there when the feature is implemented. The value is there when the user can solve, when you solve the user problem and they can feel the value that you are providing to them. Another point is goal definition. Goal definition is crucial to get um, nice results, also for be autonomous, for getting everything done. You need to be able to set your goals correctly. You need to also align the stakeholders under the same vision. You need to be a missionary. You need to go there put the vision of your product and your company in front of everyone and align to get excitement and to get all departments, all cross-functional teams working towards the same. Each department will probably have different goals. Your mission is also to align them towards the company goal and to make them excited into working and getting to build the right product and at the end of the day, deliver the most value to your users and not just try to hit goals. You need to create alignment across the company. And just to be closing, uh, for anyone who is thinking about moving from engineering to product, I would like to say to you, like, to tell you four uh, questions. If you answer to any of those, yes, I will tell you, you should probably give it a try. Those are that when you have a new feature, do you want to really understand the problem the feature is trying to solve? I mean, what do I go with this is you really want to know not just how you're going to do it, but also to understand what's the problem 
that they are trying to solve by adding this into the backlog and why it's here. Why does this feature exist at all? Do you care about the impression a solution will cost to the user? I'm pointing here to, do you care about what happens once your feature has been already, uh, your execution stage has already been done and you have shipped it? Do you care about, hey, will the user like it? Are the users using it? Also, are you interested in what, happen, of what happens with the feature after it's released? It comes to the same point. The other one is more into what you are building. It may be that you are all the time thinking about, hey, how will the user like it? This one is more about following it up after you have let it go. And to finish with, while developing, it's this of uh, spending time trying to empathize with the user and to really understand them, to really get into, OK, for whom am I building this? Why am I building this for them? What would be better for them? If you really empathize with your user, you can build way better features. It's not the same to build a feed for all people that uh, are working, I don't know, as medical staff than to work to build a feed for teenagers that you're they're going to use like TikTok, for example. And that will be all. Thank you for giving me the space. You can contact me. There is my email. There is my personal website. Any questions, please follow up. Thank you so much, Mariano. It uh, was very insightful and interesting. And uh, you identified some, some core issues which are relevant not only for, the, for people transitioning, but uh, for all product managers, um, actually. And uh, now, everyone, you are uh, welcome to ask questions, either verbally or in writing. You can post them uh, in the chat. And for our guests on, on YouTube, you can uh, post your questions there, and we will gladly transfer them to you. OK, actually, I would have uh, uh, a first question, Mariano. Yeah. Um, you presented us with the with the general perks and uh, and the cons of making this transition. What would you say was your personal uh, biggest challenge in uh, making this this step? I think that my personal biggest challenge was um, coming out from my comfort zone because I was like really comfortable as an engineer. I was not really getting a lot of stress. I was like doing well, but it was, I think from a personal level, that was the biggest. And from a um, more work-related level, it was that my product was not a software as a service product, that the actual product was the surgery. I think that was a really huge um challenge to me okay and one of the the largest benefits you you feel you uh, you gained from making this this transition one of your greatest satisfactions uh, i think that it is like the like from a personal i'm going to divide it again from a personal from like work related i think that from a personal level is the ability to now how I, I think that I've earned like a um, better big picture um, standpoint on my company. I like, and in problems in general, I'm way better, I think, and I'm really happy on that, on this discovery um, phases mm -hmm. that I was not really something that I was doing before. And from work related to find myself being able to communicate to run workshops to run meetings and to do it in an efficient way that was something that I was actually pretty scared about and it was really nice to see the first workshops uh, going all well there another book the workshopper guide really nice to run workshops really nice framework to find obstacles and problems Yes, yes I imagine it's quite a transition from uh, from programming which 
is also partially individual and uh, and quiet, so to so to say, to to a position where you have a lot of meetings and you're the center point of communications. So, I uh, I can totally understand the the challenge and also the satisfaction at the same time. And we also uh, have a have a question a question from uh, from Elton. So Mariano, did you work with the same team after you made, migrated to the new position? If yes, how did your team react on that? Did the team accept being leaded by you? Um, I keep working with the same team and I wouldn't say that as, as a product manager, at least as my position, I was like leading them. It was more like complementing them complementing from product between product and engineering i think that there is like a complement more than a living there but yeah we have no problem all of them already know already knew that i wanted to make this transition and um we haven't spoken speaking before that like for a long time and when it was done we were all happy of the new with the new uh, team organization Okay, thank you. Do we have uh, guests who are doing this transition themselves or are thinking about doing this transition? No, I, I did have a quick question though. Sure, sure, please. Um, so when you had the idea of moving from engineering to products, like how long were you thinking about it for before you committed to th being like, right, this is definitely what I'm gonna do? Oof, for uh, like over a year. Oh, really? Okay, like, okay. It was like one year of like, okay, what am I going to do? Do I really want to start pursuing a career on product? What does a career in product looks like? How did it continue from here? That's why luckily my company really support me on giving me like small projects to start doing like some little product management really focused on something mm -hmm. and once i was like okay i actually like it they also were open to allow me to go into a full-time position but yeah it was a process of over a year and like start like doing some little stuff for like three to four months before going to full-time okay cool, cool. interesting thank you yeah. Okay, we furthermore uh, have a... Hello. Sorry, me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Mariano, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. It was very nice. Uh, you spoke of, of value multiple uh, multiple times. I mean, how are you measuring value from your product perspective? Because as I understand what your company does, there is a there's a large you know, uh, operation element involved in it. There is a software element involved in it, but it's really the technology and the software is really to support the really the logistics and the operation. So how are you measuring this value? Because I, I came to across that in your presentation quite a few times. Yeah, uh, it really depends on different stakeholders. For example, to surgeons, you can argue that value, you can give it by efficiency on their consultations or in how many patients they can manage. While, for example, on patients, you have a lot of value focused on the outcome, on how did they get the surgery? Did they got any problem? Are they happy after all this had happened? Did we give them, gave them contention? Did we give them all the care they needed also from an emotional and supportive side. Did they find all the information that they needed, et cetera? We have different metrics that are into efficiency. We have metrics that are more into happiness. It really depends on which side of the app are you trying to measure the value, where actually the value is. So could you could you enlighten us a bit more on what kind of metrics would you, whether it's from the surgeon side or from the end customer side? Yeah, yeah, for example, I can talk yeah. more about uh, the surgeon side, for example. Mm -hmm. You have some metrics about how many patients are they able to manage, how, mu how much informed the patients that you send them are, because we only work with specialized surgery, so yeah. it's mostly elective um, surgery. 
-hmm. it's really important that when the patient go to the surgeon, they are already like ready to go and they already know what they want and they already have information there. So from a surgeon perspective, you can go with that and you can also go with how long did all the process uh, take. Okay. Uh, from the it... end customer side or from the end user side, the, as in the patient side, what, what kind of KPIs are you using or metrics are you, are you measuring? Yeah, uh, right now, most of the metrics are about engagement, about patients also um, feedback to us, like, okay, after the surgery was done, what's the rate of good outcome that we have? With feedback that we have, you also have like difference between outcome and feedback, because sometimes the outcome is that you had an infection, but you were able to really support the patient and go through that because that stuff happened in medical uh, sur in surgeries. So at the end of the day, the final outcome is positive and your patient loves you. I think that most of that is based on, yeah, on how much patients like it and how much patients love it. Then you also have like um, usual metrics to keep the software like, okay, engagement, conversion rate, um, how do they manage through the funnel, um, access access to different pages, etc. That depends, yeah. Okay, thank you. We also have some uh, YouTube questions, but before that, I think Diana, you wanted to, to ask a question. Uh, yes, thank you, Anna. Uh, and thank you, Marana, for a very interesting um, lecture. Uh, for me, it's very interesting because um, I'm thinking about moving to product uh, management position. I, I mean, in, in this role. And um, you said that it was very important um, to gain effective communication and also a lot of other new skills for you, like you didn't have before in your engineer position. And uh, can you tell a little bit more about how you gained them? I mean, uh, how, how did you learn them? Did you, I don't know, you, you said about books, but is it only the books? I believe it should be something, something else that help you to, to gain these goals? Uh, it was actually like a lot of reading and learning frameworks on how to effectively run a meeting, how to effectively run a workshop, etc. And then it was also like uh, experience going there and doing it. My first workshop was a mess. The second one was a little bit less of a mess. And the ones I'm running now, I'm a little bit less of a mess than the one before. I think that there is a lot that you learn by doing it, but definitely all the material from those books helped me a lot. More than anything, into positioning myself on what's my scope, where should I be focusing, and into being able to deliver the best from my position on. But a lot of that was done while doing it. For example, I can say that I've read a lot of times of the don't fall into the quick wins and all that stuff. But when I started working, I went there and I fall into the quick wins trap and I started just doing the, I started with the famous building trap of just adding features without really um, knowing what I was doing. I think there's a lot of that you gain while you do. Uh, but, yeah, the, but the support is always good from the books. Like you have your frameworks. It's, I think it's really important to you to be able to like see other proven ways uh, when you're starting and not to start by reinventing the wheel itself. Oh, I see. I, I understand it totally. And um, do you agree that uh, it's kind of not pointless, but um, I don't know, not very effective just to read a lot of material before you can practice it. Um, uh, I or, or maybe, 
yeah or maybe it's it's a good way like to um go for a lot of theory first you know to read to watch and everything and after go to practice like to be more prepared how, how do you think is it better to prepare before very I, i don't know very good but at least try your best and after go for practice or before or, or not um, going so far for theory but trying to do it in in parallel like to do it more i think you need to balance the things because it depends on what role you are going to be fulfilling there is a stuff that is that they suppose that you know and that you should be doing like for example how to run a workshop for problem discovery if you are working as a product manager they will probably expect that you know some framework of how to do it, that you have an idea of what to do there and not that you will be improvising since minute one. In my case, all this reading was uh, mainly uh, really important to me to get myself into saying, okay, I like what I read. I think that I can find myself in this position. I think that the main book was inspired where they really speak about um, product at scale and different roles within product and how from product you see different departments and also escaping the build trap was another book that was really interesting to me and okay i really like how all this sound before it was i wanted to be not 100 sure that it was a good move that i was moving switching careers but i wanted to have some certainty that at least from a theoretical way i liked it Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Thank you a lot for your answers. Yeah. It helped. Thank you. Okay, then I, I would go read the, the questions we, ha we have from our guests on, on YouTube. We have one from Sheishank and one from Raul, which are similar. I would read both and I think they're quite similar. So the first one, could you help understand how current students who have an engineering background could transition towards a career in product management. And the second one from Raul, what would you recommend to people transitioning to PM roles from engineering, but not within the, the company, but maybe after studies or from coming from different companies? Yeah, I would say that you need to look for a company that you can relate yourself with the product, with the vision, because at the end of the day, you will be holding that vision as your flag. So you need to go into somewhere that you really feel passionate about what you will be doing and what you will be delivering. And also try to look for a company that they already have some senior positions that they will have people who will mentor you. And if not, try to find mentors by yourself. It's really important mostly thing in product to have mentorship and to have someone who will lead you into this whole path but don't just i would recommend to be really careful on which company you are applying to and always try to see their vision their product vision that they might defer and also the product structure that they have Uh, at the moment, if it will be able to support your career growth and to yeah, support you while you are learning the craft of product management. Okay, thank you very much. Just one moment. So, um, Victoria? Yes. Could I you please uh, read uh, the second question from, uh, from YouTube? Uh, sure. So, the second question was Did you ever come across a time where you questioned yourself after transitioning to product management and giving up the ability to build the solutions yourself, and hence that you should? go back to engineering basically have you ever doubted and how did you go about it <laughs> every day i think that that's part of it 
you are like already asking yourself of, hey, what am I doing, etc. But I think that it happens in most of the of new career paths of saying, hey, what am I doing? Until you start getting your first wins, your first victories, you start seeing yourself more comfortable in the position and really seeing what are you able to do. That that's something that you won't get in two weeks, three weeks, four months, five months. You really need to grow into the position and settle yourself uh, there to be able to say, okay, actually I can do this. Thank you. Anna, are we closing the live stream now then? Yes. Yes, I think we can uh, we can close, but don't go away because we we dearly invite you on Zoom to for the networking session. So everyone from from YouTube, uh, please uh, please join us. The the link should be available or should be available soon. <laughs>